What up, y'all? We are here for our midweek alchemy message, and I'm really excited about it. Um, our alchemy message, if you don't know, is structured to unpack the way that we're approaching the week's lessons. So if you want to know what the week's lessons are, just go back and watch um, the other, like the most recent tarot oracle message from Monday. Monday is our anchor message, which we get our lessons, and then the alchemy message unpacks like how we're approaching the work. So... The cards are speaking directly to and about the astrological weather that's happening um, today and tomorrow, so that's really fun. Uh, but I'll just get into it, show you the cards, and then we'll talk about it. So from the Wild Unknown Alchemy deck, we've got Conjunctio or Conjunction. We've got Venus. And we've got chaos. Underneath conjunction, we've got seven of wands. He's my favorite in <laughs> this deck. I love him. Underneath Venus, we've got the moon. And underneath chaos, we've got Knight of Swords. So super fun. So this conjunction here with Venus and chaos is like addressing the traffic jam of Venus influences that's going on over the next like today and tomorrow so what's happening we've got um on the 28th we've got venus opposite neptune also on the 28th today that uh mercury stationed direct and then tomorrow venus trines pluto while venus enters libra so what do we have we have venus trining uranus was yesterday Oh, wow. So that was even another thing with Venus. So Venus trined Uranus yesterday. <laughs> We've got Uranus in trauma today. No, I'm kidding. Venus trined Uranus yesterday. Venus opposite Neptune is today. Then Mercury stations direct today. And then tomorrow Venus trines Pluto. And then Venus also moves into Libra. So it's really interesting because... The first card out is we have Conjunctio with Seven of Wands. And what was that first movement was Venus trining Uranus. So Uranus is that planet of like unexpected surprises, uh, original thinking. Uranus rules Aquarius. So like that Aquarius full moon that we had uh, like a week or so ago, it like had this catalytic quality to it to like sort of turn on the new self. It was like new self, new launch, hard launch. And it started in the mind, right? That's where everything starts. The spark is here in that singularity that comes through. And then that divine inspiration comes through our mind and then through our consciousness into words. So first... Aquarius gave us a revolution of the mind and it changed our mindset and it changed our perspectives and it changed the way that we were perceiving things and talking about things and, and things like that. And so it started with the mind, but now it's like creeping down into the heart. Aquarius is now awakening the heart and the heart chakra had come up at the beginning of the week, um, heart chakra opening. So that's very interesting. So we have here, this conjunction card is about the everything coming together, right? In the laboratory, you've got the balance, you've got the temperance, you've got the, the um, infinity symbol here with the masculine and the feminine. And so it's like 
The inner and the outer are starting to integrate and merge. And that's what we've been talking about. We've been talking about drawing the light of our higher self in, into the material so that we can start behaving and living in that consciousness, in those behaviors, in those patterns, so that we can then create that higher potential, that higher destiny, that higher path that that higher self has laid out for us and already has in store and is already living, it's already possible for us. It's just that we have to reverse engineer, okay, what, who do I have to become to get there? What do I have to do and adopt? And what kind of structures and discipline do I need to have to, to follow through on that and, and build that? So all of that is integrating. Um, the spiritual uh, like expansion and awakening is like integrating into the heart. And so it's not just these intellectualized ideas, like we're feeling different. We're feeling more fulfillment and peace and patience and compassion and all of that. So every, it's all coming together. The consciousness is, is coming into our nature now. It's coming through our lower, our, you know, even in through our like material nature. So the conjunction is coming together. Seven of Wands is about like putting in and exerting that effort to overcome boundaries and to, uh, or sorry, overcome your patterns and to set boundaries and to like stake your claim and go after what you want and stand up for what you believe in and, and put up a fight for your dreams, you know, fight for your dreams, fight the good fight, um, you know, picking your battles. But it's about having that gumption and that moxie and that, you know, wherewithal to just like keep at it, keep at the good fight, keep fighting for your dreams, keep making an effort, keep persevering. The bars that this strong man or whatever, like you would call him in the sideshow, he's pulling these bars open, the restrictions, he's removing the barriers and the blocks, right? By his strength, the strength that he's gained over um, resistance, right? Pushing up back against resistance, working out, um, experience, life experience. Tattoos represent um, his experiences in life and what he's gone through and what he's learned through his triumphs and his, you know, perceived failures and, and all of it. You know, it's all a part of him and it's all a part of his knowledge, all a part of his wisdom that he's now integrating into how he approaches life. So he's breaking through what has previously kept him, you know, um, stalled or blocked or whatever, however you want to think of it. So it's like <clears throat> the cycle is starting to move into this new story, right? And so we just kind of got to get over the hump of being new on at a new level, on a new path, um, trying to like be this new version of self. Like we've definitely had a major shedding, I think so many of us. And when you think back to yourself like a year ago, it's like you can almost like hardly remember a year ago. It's like, it feels like a million lives ago and it feels like a million years ago, right? So, so interesting, but there's so many opportunities coming up this week to really see the triggers in our egos that are left. And, and it's in those times where we are triggered that we have the opportunity to really do something about it. Otherwise, we don't see those parts of ourselves when we're satisfied and in fulfillment. So, you know, don't bemoan when you are in uncomfortable or undesirable situations, maybe through the week, but use that as a real opportunity to get into the nitty gritty of all of that stuff that might just still be these bars left over, right? We're, we're getting those out of the way so we're not holding ourselves back moving forward new day. So Venus, here we are. Um, the This awakening in our mind is now traveling down into our heart. And it's, it's, our heart needs to open and awaken to like accelerate and go and like come up a level in the beauty and the love and the relationship dynamics and our ability to interact with others and, and all of that too it's going to spill out so like when you know we've got this channel that's coming this way where we get our downloads from divine but it's through the heart that we go in the what would be like horizontal 
in order to share that light with the world. And it's, it's, you know, we've got to, it, it spills out through our heart. So our heart is awakening. And so that is going to allow more expansion and joy and fulfillment in the realm of like abundance, security, our work, like I said, our relationship dynamics with others, you know, maybe you've been doing some like family healing and things are going to a new different level with your like siblings and parents, maybe like maybe there's like been a lot of forgiveness and a lot of understanding, a lot of work done there. And maybe you're, you're able to have better relationships now. And so maybe that spills out into fulfilling friendships and then fulfilling relationships. Maybe if you already are in an existing romantic relationship, like maybe that relationship deepens and improves. Maybe if you're not, you meet someone at, at, at that this new level, you know, that's like at a at more as more of an equal, right? Rather than you know someone who maybe you know is not or wasn't as aligned or whatever. So Mercury. So, okay, wait, so we Venus, Trine, Uranus. So this has us rethinking and reinventing, like I said, how we have relationship dynamics and paradigms and like even at work and things like that too and how you relate to client and, uh, you know, getting um, gigs or however your, you know, work structure is. It's just like how you're going to be able to relate to people because so many of the patterns that were driving you before that may have been causing um, like roadblocks or friction or, you know, any number of ways that we hold ourselves back. It's like we're, we're going to be able to dissolve those things because we're going to be so much more aware of it now that we can reprogram, recalculate. So we're reapproaching how we love, maybe even like what we find brings us a sense of security and happiness and fulfillment. Maybe we are um, going into like having a deeper sense of satisfaction with the work that we do, or maybe we're doing something different. Um, but Venus affects love and money and security and our feelings of security. And so it affects like our intimate relationships. It, re it affects like the way that we relate to, to others. It affects like our home, what we find beautiful, art, style, all of it. So I don't know, you might be having a, like a rebirth or a reinvention in those areas, an upgrade. Like I feel like everything is getting like up leveled, like next leveled. So it's all kind of going through this like reconfiguration. And I think last week was like, all about the mind and the consciousness. And so this week it's been more about feeling, the feeling of being at home, the feeling of perceiving beauty in life around you, joy, laughter, what makes you feel abundant, right? Have you ever just woken up and just felt like, ah, oh, I feel abundant today. No, nothing's changed in your material possession or anything like that. It's just like you feel more abundant some days than others. So it's like a wash of abundance and, and maybe like a different way of perceiving what that is to you. Um, okay, so Venus trying Uranus, Venus opposite Neptune. So Venus opposing Neptune is like, okay, now that we know what is making us feel secure, what feels like it brings beauty into our life, where is our soul leading us? Like what is, what is our purpose? You know, what is this like calling that we have within? So now that we're like narrowing that down, Neptune is over here, like opposing Venus. And Venus is like, okay, Neptune, you've been daydreaming about this. You've been having these, like you've been imagining, you've been having these creative ideas, you've been dreaming, you've been, you know, even ruminating, but like you are getting inebriated on dreaming about the potential, but not bringing it through into the physical, right? It's like dreaming about something, daydreaming about something, but not taking action on it. So that energy is like Venus opposing Neptune. It's like, hey, I love all the ideas you've been putting out here. Now, what are we not doing to make these happen? Like we need to make these happen. Like we need to stop being an illusion and we need to be like actively creative. So instead of having empty vessels is what Kabbalah calls it. When you have like these ideas that you kind of start to do, 
you don't follow through on them and you just kind of like leave them. It's like, it's called leaving an empty vessel and it creates chaos. It gathers chaos, right? So I don't know how we like, Oh, Venus opposing Neptune. It's like following through on your ideas, like taking inspired action to like make your dreams and your vision for your life, your vision of a beautiful life that you, you find like your soul is calling you towards to like take action to make that happen now and use the dreaming um, that Neptune is capable of in a, in a productive way, but like don't get lost in illusion, right? And that like, and like that get getting drunk on like the ideas of potential it's like such a dangerous thing to like get stuck on thinking about um the potential of things um your own potential the potential of a business idea the potential of you know someone else or whatever it is so staying grounded um Venus also paired with the moon here is like reconfiguring on a personal level through this with the Uranus, the trine with Uranus and opposing Neptune. It's like what has, what have the subconscious patterning and drives been in our love life and as we've made money, right? In our, in our love, in our like consciousness around love and money and our experience and our relationship to love and money like what have been the subconscious blocks that have been holding us back in those areas what have been our fears around those things what have been like subconscious programming and limiting beliefs and maybe just like unconscious default patterning that we've like slipped into over time so those things are coming to our awareness so that we can address them and like really own it and see it and be able to identify it so that it's easy to identify and you're like you know what i'm not doing that again i'm sovereign i'm choosing something new a new route a new behavior like that way we can practice with presence and intention, creating new neural pathways, setting new default settings, like positive, like we can program ourselves in a positive way, in a, in a, um, in a creative way, in a constructive way, rather than a destructive way. Okay, and then what was the other thing? Mercury stationing direct, Venus trining Pluto. So again, and then Pluto is like transformation, right? So it's, we're really getting in here and transforming those old ways that we approached love and money. The old beliefs around it, our old version of ourselves according to that self-worth and that level of experience at the time is like no more. Like we are shedding that completely. And so we are being reborn again, this new creature um, with light years difference in, you know, everything. There's just so much change. And so now it's like, okay, fresh start. Transformation in these areas in major ways. But it's like, it's like taking everything off of a hard drive on a computer and then like putting all new operating systems on it and like all new apps and, and all of that. So it's like almost like you have like a whole new computer. It's like to that level. So it's like, of course, we're going to dismantle these things so that we can rebuild and like plant seeds now with like healthy roots and healthy mindsets and help like a healthy heart and healthy mind and healthy soul right at this fresh new level um and then venus is entering libra which libra is about how we relate to others and empathy and like balance right um give and take and sharing um, and relating. So, and there was some Mars, Mars sextiling Chiron too. So how we perceive ourselves, you know, just a couple of days ago, there was so much healing around our I identity, right? And I think that that was really all of that energy around integrating our shadow, um, being there to like, acknowledge our inner child and try to reparent our inner child and integrate the shadow and call out the ego and rehabilitate the ego and do all of this heavy lifting over the last few days. So 
there's been so much going on inside of us. So you might feel a little tired. You might feel a little bit chaotic, right? It has felt a little bit chaotic. But now that everything's been, it's literally felt like we were in, we were taken down into like an abyss and like think of a person being baptized. It's like the person goes down into the water and then once we're in the water, it's almost like we've dissolved into an uncreated state, like in a chrysalis, like in the void of like not beingness. And we have been deconstructed and then any of the refuse and like old cords and old patterning and old soul contracts and all of the impurities have been sifted out of that us soup. <laughs> those imaginal cells. And then from there, we have been recreated anew into like a new creature, rising out of that water, being born again from a new creature from chaos. And so now we can like, it's like every, we have so much more clarity and energy to like just move forward and take on this next chapter with like clarity and intention and excitement and passion and like enthusiasm and optimism again. But this particular Knight of Swords, they point out how she's learned how to like communicate her, um, her message in a compelling way that inspires others um, and can communicate her beliefs and, and be a leader through communication. So I think that's interesting too, that this is also coming along with that Mercury going direct. And I also think that this like speaks to the speed of how things can really shift. If you feel like it's taking you so long to get to this point in your life, it's okay because once things are functioning properly, things can you know progress very quickly. Or very suddenly, you know, it's funny how life can be one way and it feels like it's never going to change. And then within like a day, it's just like everything's totally different. You're like, whoa, I didn't realize. So I think that we're wary of becoming like foolishly optimistic. And I think that it's not, you know, I don't blame you and I feel the same. All of us were like, oh, I don't know. I don't know, you know. But I think that the, what the big ask here is to trust the creator and be playful. Remember the, the comic card was out earlier in the week. And to trust and open our heart to have optimism again. That's part of the heart opening is allowing the heart to be optimistic and excited. <sighs> I know it's a, it's a big ask. It's asking a lot. But I think that is the, uh, that's the assignment right now. That's the approach is to just try to open our hearts again to be unjaded and patient and kind and understanding and excited and optimistic and watch how things start to take shape. I mean, the higher self, you know, is optimistic. The higher self is in, you know, good spirits. The higher self is patient. The higher self is compassionate. The higher self is, hey, no hurry. It's all good. My life is great. I have nothing to complain about. I'm grateful. I'm the higher self. We're grateful. We're the higher self, right? So things are, I think that they're, they're shifting. I think that good things are happening. I think good things are coming. Um, and I think that it sometimes feels scary and irresponsible to get excited and optimistic, but I think that that's exactly what we're being asked to do. Feel the beauty, feel the abundance, feel good, feel happy, feel joyous, feel love, you know, just in general. And it will create more of itself. I think, uh, you know, and this is what we want to be creating from, right? Look at this palette of color. I think this is Chrysocolla too. Chrysocolla is like the goddess energy as well. And it has to do with communication. It's like divine feminine and communication. So lots, lots going on here. Um, but yeah, divine feminine energy, creativity, inspiration, love, beauty, abundance, security, clarity. This is all included. If you sign up today, <laughs> to face your fears, break your patterns, set boundaries.
persevere, stand up for what you believe in, fight for what you desire, <laughs> go after your dreams, don't give up, bust through your blocks. Fun times. All right, well, that is all for tonight. I'll see y'all tomorrow for our uh, weekly romance oracle and tarot reading for Thirsty Thursday. All right. Ciao. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it, then please give it a like. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, turn on notifications to be notified of when I drop content. Like the videos, comment, share them. Anything that you do helps these messages get out to other people who need them. So you watching a video and taking an action on it actually makes a positive difference in someone else's life.